Hi everyone, it's Randy. I'm coming on today to show you some of my jelly printing techniques and uh, I am sure that you will figure out very quickly that I'm no jelly print expert, but I did want to come on and show you because I had a lot of questions about how I created the papers for my batik journals. And so this is, um, you know, just the way that I do it. There's a lot of tutorials out there for jelly printing and people do different things and it's all kind of a matter of opinion and preference. So uh, by no means am I claiming to be an expert and you're going to find that I don't clean my stencils, I don't clean my brayer, I rarely clean my jelly plate and so you know that's just what I prefer. I did clean it up for this video, but um, usually I like to leave the crusties on there, and uh, I'll show you why later. But, so just to get started on this, I thought I would show you a few papers. Obviously, my other papers are gone. Uh, all the journals have sold. But, so, working with stencils is really fun. It doesn't matter, you know what level of experience you have with them, you almost can't mess them up. And so there's some of the images um, that I've created with some of the stencils. I don't have any large stencils right now. I am gonna order some because I think that might would be a little bit easier to work with. But right for right now, I have this size and let's see what they are. We have almost six and a little over eight so about an eight and a quarter and then i have some tim holtz stencils that we can work with those are smaller then i have some six by sixes um and then i have one i think is this one any larger this one feels larger to me where did my ruler go here we go so this one is a full six by nine. So those are the sizes that I have. I do have some larger ones, but these I will use their num uh, letters. And so these I would use after I get my background that I want. And then I would, um, put on the numbers like this so it's you know maybe would be at a corner of a page or, or something like that anywho all right so let's just jump right in shall we and I do want to say something so I have a smaller jelly plate over here it's a five by seven and I do have an index card size one as well that I, I use for my index cards or I'll use this for my index cards because that is really fun. I love making the um, index cards on my jelly plate because you can get all kinds of texture and this will be for another day but um, because I'm not sure I'll have time to get into the crusties and the texture if you can see that going on there it just has a lot a lot of texture so that takes a while to build up on your jelly plate as well. So, let me also say that the paper that you use matters. I was using some thinner paper when I started out messing around yesterday, and I didn't realize that it was that thin, and it started pulling up because there is a very strong bond between the paint and the paper once you um, rub the paper over the paint. And so it it's um, a lot of pressure coming up if, if, or resistance coming up, if that makes sense. And so if you don't use um, heavier copy paper, then you might get this result as well. This was just 20 pound paper and I ordered this because Sometimes I like a really thin paper when I put them in my journals, if I'm using a digital kit or something like that, because I don't like my papers to get too thick. 
But so what works really well for me is 24 and up. So I've just kind of saved this paper to roll my jelly, um, my brayer off on. And so what you're going to need today is a brayer or two if you want to switch back and forth. I've ordered a small one uh, because that way I can work in the stencil in smaller areas. So you're gonna need your jelly plate, your brayer. You don't have to have this extra jelly plate here, but I do that to kind of control the paint a little bit. So I'll put the paint on here sometimes and then I'll put it directly on my jelly plate sometimes. And you're gonna need um, some stencils and then something to kind of wash your hands with and I just, you know, use some regular wipes. And if I have missed anything, paint, jelly plate, stencils, paper, brayer, wipes. And I, I think that's it. So it takes a little while for your jelly plate to get warmed up, just so you know that. So I am going to go right in with some stencils and show you how I get these really cool effects. So I'm gonna choose this one, which is a Lavinia stencil that I absolutely adore. It makes the coolest images. And let me see if I have which one that is. I don't have the name of that one specifically, but this, so this is how, uh, this is Lavinia stencils. And I have them in my journal um, video to where I did a flip through of my journals and kind of talked about the process that I went through with those journals. And so they are linked down in there, the ones that I could find on Amazon. If you can't find them on Amazon, um, you can go online to her website directly and uh, find that find those as well. So I'm just patting this down to get a good seal on the jelly plate with the stencil so my paint doesn't necessarily roll underneath of there. And so just going to pat that down a bit. Now next I'm just going to start adding paint. Okay. So I watched one girl and she did black and I'm going to experiment a little a little bit here. But so I have Payne's Gray. She was using black and she also said you could use Payne's Gray. So I'm just going to do that and I'm going to see what happens here because I don't usually use that. And actually, she laid hers her Payne's Gray down on the stencil before she put the stencils down. But I'm going to try it backwards like this and then we'll try the other way as well and, and see what happens. So one of my pet peeves with jelly printing is when you put the paint directly onto your jelly plate, when you start rolling like this, it kind of makes little blobs of paint. So I do like to get over here and roll it a couple of times. That way there's no blanks or blurbs um, you know, real technical terms here in my printing because that will remain. It absolutely will remain. And I'm sorry, you guys, my dogs, um, might be barking some today. They are anxiously awaiting for my husband to get out of the woods. <laughs> So every little squirrel that goes by or leaf that blows, they think they think it's him coming out of the woods. All right, so these, that's pretty well laid down. So I'm going to take a piece of paper and I'm just going to lay it right over these stencils. And then I'm going to press firmly down onto the paper. And it doesn't matter if it gets right here, but I'm going to pull up what I just laid down on here. But it's also gonna leave a little bit behind and um, you'll see that there will kind of be an outline that gives some dimension 
to the print itself. I hope that I've grabbed my good paper. So see how that is just grabbing that negative space right there. Isn't that cool? So that could be just left alone like that, but um, I, I like to go back and add some gold uh, or some other things. So I'm going to pull that off, and now I'm going to work on this with another color. So I think I'm going to open up this little one so I can use it as well because I don't want to get into that Payne's Gray. And I also don't want to waste that paint. It's really expensive. This is um, Liquitec Basics Acrylics. And all the, all the paints that you're going to use that we're using today and that you would use on your jelly plate are um, acrylic. You can use metallic. You can use matte. You can use gloss. You can use whatever trips your tripper. Okay. So I think I'm going to use this pink, and this pink is a little thin. Maybe I'll use this one. Hopefully, I've got the got the right one. One of these is really thin, and I don't know why. Yep, it's that one, but that's okay. <clears throat> and this is nowhere near enough paint, and I might end up just going right on the jelly plate. But this lets you control the amount of paint that you're putting on your jelly plate and control those blobs. And y'all, this is so therapeutic. Uh, I just can't tell you enough. I kind of got in a funk and like I was explaining on the last video and just wanted to be alone. Does that mean, <laughs> you know, and I didn't want I don't know. I didn't feel like talking to anybody and I got into jelly printing and it just soothed me so much and it, and it really helped. Art is such good therapy, isn't it? Like even when it's not pretty, it's just something that we need to do sometimes. And, um, I just was so amazed <laughs> at the free therapy I got. So, you know, if nothing else, Come get you some free therapy on your jelly plate. So I'm just kind of mixing these colors in. You can see the pink right here and over there. And then I'm going to come in with a darker as well. I need to get some more of this magenta. It's one of my favorite colors. And um, I thought I had ordered some. Ooh, that's a lot of paint. And... Uh, it hasn't come in, so I think I need to get some more. Some of the uh, acrylic paints, I I get um, larger bottles of, like the 8 ounces, because I use so much of it. And so you'll figure out your favorite colors, and, you know, you'll figure out which ones you like to use best. And, you know, like... I do this gold. I love this gold in a large um, in a large bottle. All right, so let's take this. Now, <clears throat> just so you know, on a jelly plate, you have to think backwards. So whatever you put down first is going to be on the top when you pull your paper up. And whatever you put down last is gonna be the underneath layers. And it took me a little while to figure that out because I was like, oh, why is that top layer not popping through? But it's because it's not the top layer, it's the bottom layer. <laughs> That's pretty good. Look how beautiful that is. So you can see the uh, the Payne's Gray is just giving some accents in here. And then the different pinks and the magenta over there. So I love how that turned out. 
Now what we're gonna do, and you need um, somewhere to lay your stencils, and I have a piece of paper here. What did I do with it? Let me find that. It ran away from me. Okay, I'm just gonna use a regular piece of paper. So you're gonna pull your stencil up and see how paint remains on this one as well. Now, obviously, if you had a larger stencil, it wouldn't be um, having that line in the middle, but it's totally fine. All right, so right now, I'm just gonna take something and get anything? Can I find anything? <laughs> Here, I'm going to use one of these. And I'm going to kind of draw this a little bit so it's not going to smear for my next layer. Don't touch it. All right, so my next layer, I'm going to do blue and I'm going to do this Robin's Egg Blue. And this I'm just going to pop right on to the jelly plate because we're going to use more paint than we have because we're going to cover our whole plate. And it doesn't matter that this has pink on it. This dries really quickly. Um, you know, you might get some on there, but the blue um, is going to overtake that and cover up your brayer. And just be gentle with your brayer. Don't push down hard on this step because you don't want to move that image around that's left on the bottom. And just a note, so the more you roll your brayer over the paint, the more it picks up so I don't recommend rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling because eventually that paint is gonna be tacky enough to where it's just gonna roll right back onto your brayer. So be careful there. All right, now let's get another piece of paper. And also wanted to let you know, so I know a lot of people have preferences on the size jelly plate that they use. I like the 9 by 12, and I'm not sure if that's the di exact dimensions. I don't know if it's 9 and a half or whatever, 12 and a half. Um, but a lot of people work on the 8 by 10, and I don't like that because I like for my paper and the paint to go to the edges, if at all possible. Now, when, when we get crusty over here on the edges, it's not going to work out so well. But, if you don't like the crusties, I happen to, then what you need to do is have yourself kind of a piece of paper that you pick up the edges on. See, like this. So, I just go and I pick up these edges like that onto this paper. And then I do it also on this side. And so then I've pulled up the paint for the most part on those edges. Okay. Make sure we got that good and down. I hope I got my good paper. And now you're gonna see a totally different result. Than what we started out with and we're still seeing that pain scray right so you still see that in there and now depending on how much paint you put down also you can get some really good texture on here and a lot of people won't use a lot of paint sometimes and I'm not afraid of it because I can just roll it right off or you know, all you got to do is lay a piece of paper over it and, and get it off. So it's not that big of a deal. 
but look how amazing that turned out. So this is the negative space that we got when we pulled it up with the stencil on it. And now that we pulled the stencils off the jelly plate, you can see the outlines and it's so, so cool. Now you'll also notice that there's still a little bit of this on the plate, okay? So I love doing this. I'm kind of gonna show you one of my favorite tricks. I'm gonna use this antique white, if I can get any of it to come out. I'm gonna go directly on the plate. I'm almost out of it, I, need to, I think I have a backup. But this is a color that I, I need to get in a large, and I, and I failed to do that, but I thought I did. But anywho, I need to do that. So, cut this. See what I mean about those blobs? So, you always kind of want to get your paint roller going so that those blobs don't spread all over your plate. See that where it's left on there? You can even see that through the paint. And then this this is going to be um, like there's some blank spots in here, like where I, my brayer stopped and started or what have you. So I'm going to lay one more layer over this, but I'm going to dry it just a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to put another color behind it. And the reason that you dry it a little bit is because you don't want to make mud. So if you don't let your paint dry a little bit uh, in between, you're, you're just going to make mud. And I'm also going to show you another technique that um, with a lot of paint wet that doesn't make mud. So uh, another one of my favorite techniques. But... So what am I going to do? What do I want to do? I always love blue. So let's, that's a gloss. I don't want that. Let's go in with this uh, pale blue and see what we get on top here. So remember that stencil that's left on there is going to be what's on top. Then the antique white, and then the blue is going to be in the background. And if you get too much paint on your brayer, just take a piece of paper uh, and, and roll it on there. Roll it off. And this, this acrylic paint dries so fast, so see, I can just roll it off on there. I always have a piece of paper that I do that with. Um, so just roll that right off of your brayer. All right, so now we are ready for our paper. Just gonna press that down. Now you're gonna wanna make sure that you don't wear clothes that you like while you're doing this. Um, and keep your sleeves rolled up because I'm famous for getting my sleeves in the paint because I just kind of, on a whim, will come up and start jelly plating. So, my sweater I have on this morning, I just made sure that my sleeves are rolled up and that this, they will stay up. So, I don't have jelly plate sweater. All right, I feel like that's down pretty good. Sometimes your paper will wrinkle or you'll get little bubbles and, and that's fine. This is um, not a perfect process. I've seen a lot of people doing some fall leaves and uh, those turned out really pretty. I wanna do some of those one day. All right, so this is what we kind of get here. And it is just, um, I don't know, it's kind of crusty. It's got the antique white. It's got the blue. It's very interesting to me. 
You can use this for all kinds of things. You can use it for backgrounds, for art journals, um, you know, all, all kinds of things. Or I just love this as a, a you know, as a page in, uh, in my journals. So that's the basics on that. That is my process for the stencils. Now, the other process I want to show you, and, and notice how this stuff is still on here. So I need to go in and I need to pull this off. I didn't do that while I have my paper on there. It doesn't necessarily all come up. So um, I do kind of an ombre thing and let's do some blues and greens maybe. So we'll put Key West here and I'm going directly on the plate and there's going to be a lot of paint going on here. And Tahiti Blue, I think I opened this, yep. Let's do that right here. Use some antique white to kind of offset that. And then let's use one more. I'm gonna, where is my, my metallic? I love these Deco Art um, metallics. They're really pretty. And they add a lot of um, shine to your To your pages and that's why some of my pages look glossy all right so I, th I think I'm gonna start over here just gonna roll that I might go backwards with my brayer and then I'm gonna come in and grab that I'm gonna roll over here a little bit and I'm gonna grab that And you see what it's doing. So I'm staying within the same color palettes, trying not to make mud. Um, and the way that you do that is you don't roll too much. Okay? So right there is a blob. You can see that. And I'm going to show you when I pull this piece of paper back what happens right there. Um, but I'm going to roll off my roller and you can see how much paint I had on there. Uh, I squirted right much on there. So we're just going to take a piece of paper. You know, we could put a stencil down right now too, but I just want to show you this effect. Jelly plating is almost like magic. It's just so fun. <clears throat> you never know what anything is going to look like until you pull that paper up. It does take a little while for your jelly plate to warm up. You'll notice it kind of works better the more that you go along in your session. So be careful when pulling a piece of paper with a lot of paint on it. It, it will weaken the paper momentarily and it will want to rip on you. So those are those blobs that I'm talking about. See, I didn't really take the time like I did over here to roll them out. But look at that beautiful ombre look and that um, has some metallic in it. And since I went back and went on top of this, you can kind of see that blue behind there. So I love how that turned out. And this paper dries really fast, so you don't really have to worry about putting it on top of each other and things like that. It doesn't, um, they don't usually stick together, and if they do, they usually just pull right apart. And there's not any damage to your, your prints that you did. Gonna get some of this off. Now, 
with the eight by 10 as well, if you decide that's, uh, that's getting pretty itself, that's the way that you want to go. Uh, I see a lot of people who use the eight by 10 use larger paper and then they kind of cut it out. They cut the image out or the jelly print out and, and that's another option as well. So a lot of people don't like, you know, that you're pulling and getting paint on your finger. I mean, you're, you're going to get paint on you. Um, on the 9 by 12 but I just prefer to have it all around my edges. I don't want to have to go back and try to get that one little strip that I didn't get uh, on my piece of paper because you know the 8 by 10 is not the size of a piece of paper. It's 8 and a half by 11 and so you have a whole inch sliver over here that you don't get anything on your piece of paper. So that's why I recommend this one. All right, so this time we are going to pick up some Payne's Gray. I might need some more. And we're gonna lay it on our plate first. Roll that, and you see that I've already got some blue here. So I could do more white. I should have done more white and show you. We'll do that next. Um, what happens when you put light behind and you kind of pull the paint off that's on? It gives like that old world wall, old wall feel. It's like you know, some layers of paint that have been on there for a thousand years that are just crackling off. And I'm not sure that's enough, but we're, we're going to see. All right, I'm going to use a different stencil. This is another Lavinia stencil. All right, just kind of press that down. Don't want to do too much because I mess up this pencil there. And let's go with this one. This one has a little more room that I can touch and get it squished down. Okay. So I'm just going to pull off the negative space with these stencils with that paint laid down. So we're doing it backwards that we, um, from the process that we did initially. So this is paint stencil paper and that was stencil paint paper before. What is jiggling over here? Get that out of the way. Okay. Now this is um, not really the piece that I'm looking for, but it's cool. Uh, so what we have done is pulled up as much paint as we can from these negative spaces and you can go back in. That's gonna be really cool though when it comes through. And then we're gonna put paint on top of these. Aren't these some cool stencils? They kinda of remind me of Sea Life, but they're really, really cool. Okay, um, I have the battle for me is trying to figure out what color I wanna use. <laughs> Let's use some purple. Don't know what it's gonna look like, but we shall see. I'm just gonna put this straight on here. That may not be enough, but we shall see. I'm gonna roll my brayer around in that. And I don't care if it's, you know, rolling perfectly or not okay and then i'm going to come back and i'm going to take some of this magenta and i'm going to roll over here and then i'm going to do some of this it's 
one of my favorite colors, Sakura. This is some really super thick paint. And I'm just gonna put this right here because I don't have another place to put it. And so I'm gonna have to be careful about getting this all over the brayer before I roll it so it doesn't leave that <clears throat> teardrop blob. Here. Just kind of look where you need to fill in. I'm going to grab some of that purple again over there. And grab some more of this and go up here. And then I'm going to do something crazy and I'm going to put some metallic blue. Now you can also do this in spots. Like you can go around and do like this if you want to. Like you don't have to cover the whole thing. But if you go lightly, it's only gonna get the top of the stencil anyway. So, all right, let's see what happens. No clues what's gonna go down here. But I love those colors together. I've also got my um, jelly plate on some parchment paper and I just kind of put my hand down on that and it helps it from not moving around because I don't like it sitting directly on my table. It's got a little bit of texture to it and your jelly plate will pick up that texture. So don't ever store it on something that's textured. Always um, put it on a flat surface if not back into the leaf that it comes in. So I'm gonna get down in there really well. I hope my cone is not jiggling too much because I do have to put a little bit of pressure on here. And then this is what we have. It's a little bit messy, isn't it? I kind of like the other process better, uh, but so the Payne's Gray didn't seem to stay on here very much. I see it a little bit here, um, and maybe I needed to put more on there. Now, this has a lot of paint right here, so that's going to be texture when that dries, that blue right there. So. Um, when you have a little bit more paint in areas, that, that's where you sometimes get your texture. And down here, you'll be able to feel that paint in there when that dries. Regardless, they're all really, really cool, really cool pages. So I'm going to pull this stencil up. And I'm gonna roll off my brayer. To my paper and get that extra paint off. And so this is where I'm gonna show you the light background effect so that we don't have to go back. Let's see if I can get enough out of this. Ugh, I might have to find my other bottle, but I love this antique white. I forgot to dry it a little bit too, so I can still do that. I'm going to do that real quick. Sorry about this. I know it's probably making your eyes go crazy, but it's how you have to do it. All right, and I'm gonna see if I can find my other, my other, damn it, while that's, I know I saw it somewhere. Ta-da, there it is. Okay, 
And see, these are, no, that's a different, where's that other one? Is this a different brand? Nope, it's the same brand, Apple Barrel. I use all different kinds of brands. I don't really care. If I do come across one that I don't like, it's usually because it'll be too thin or something. So I'll try to stay away from that. So I'm just gently rolling because again, I don't want to pick up that pattern if I can help it. Okay. Pull off my braid a little bit. And let's see what we get here. I always grab the paint onto the back, but it doesn't even matter because when you're doing the flip side of this page, it's just, paint's just going to go on top of it. It's, it's not going to matter. I'm just holding on to this um, parchment paper here and pushing up with my hands, pushing that paper into the paint. Look at that. Is that cool or what? It's amazing to me the colors <laughs> that it picks up. Look at there, oh my gosh, I love, love, love this. Okay, this is one of my favorites so far. I love this one. So we can see the magenta, the blue, you can see the sakura over here. You can see the lavender. Really, look at that. Oh, I love that. Let's see if you can see the, isn't that pretty? And since I used some metallic paint, then it has some shine to it. But I absolutely love, 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 love that one. And we can go a little bit further and see if we can get any more up off of here. Because there's definitely a pattern left on there. And it's definitely dry, so you don't have to worry about spreading it around. I'm just um, rolling off my brayer on the paper. Now let's see what happens here. So you can see how utterly fun this is and how, I don't know, it is to me. Just very soothing and you create beautiful things without having to draw or be an artist. I mean, this just opens up so many avenues. And you can use these papers for all kinds of things. You can rip them and collage with them. You can rip them in art journal with them. You can make journals out of the pages themselves. All kinds of things. Oh, hello, doggy. Yeah, and he probably won't be quiet either for a minute, so I apologize in advance. Okay. There they all go. I'm going to close my door real quick, guys. Just so I can look for that. at all. They're really loud. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know, and you hear my little dog. He's trying to be a big dog. 
Oh my goodness. So, look at that. That even pulled another pretty print. So I really, really, really love that. So, as you can see, you can just have so much fun with your jelly plate. I will link, um, I'll link my jelly plate down below with Amazon links and um, you can go pick yours up and get you some acrylic paints and a brayer. You probably have acrylic paints. You probably just need a brayer and some stencils and um, let you guys go and have your own fun. And I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Please like and subscribe. Uh, especially if you've made it with me this far. I just really appreciate everybody and all your lovely comments. Thank you. Bye-bye.